Hey guys, in this video we're going to take a look at value types and reference types. Now this is kind of a complex topic, but the author brings it up in chapter 2, so I want to talk a little bit about it also. Um, we will continue to discuss it later on, so don't worry about it too much if you don't get it first off. Most languages have two categories of data types that you're working with. These are classified as value types and reference types. Now officially in Python, all the variables you make are reference types. However, they behave like value types, and that's important. The behavior is what I'm really concerned about. And for all intents and purposes, I think that's the most important thing. There was a time where you controlled memory in much more detail, and as such, it was you would really think about whether you made something reference type or value type. But since you really don't control it in most of the modern languages, it really comes down to the way it behaves. So value types are commonly in different languages, usually simple things or primitive things like string, or excuse me, integers and floats. Things that are made up of a composition or composite of things like a string, which is made up of individual characters, or other custom collections are often um, classified as reference types and they behave a little bit differently from each other. Value types are different from reference types in that the value types store their data in the area of memory in which your program is actually running. This is referred to as the program stack, whereas reference types usually are, are store their data separate from the actual program that's running. Now again, most of the time you don't care, but sometimes you do. Uh, and sometimes it explains the way things behave. In, for example, in Microsoft C Sharp programming, they have the .NET heap, which is a separate space in memory from whatever C Sharp application you're running, and that would store reference values, uh, reference data. In Python, they have they call the Python runtime, and it does basically the same kind of thing. Think about how the computer is tracking variables. Remember I talked about how a variable is has a name, it has a data type, and it has an address or data. I didn't actually use the word address, but I can now. I just said value last time. In the program stack, if it's a value type, the value will be held in the location of the application. That is the way it traditionally works. If on the other hand, it is a reference type. It'll be stored in the case of like the Python runtime or the .NET heap. And instead of having the actual value in the location of your script or application you're, you've made, it will just have a reference to the location in the .NET heap or in our case, a Python runtime. So the way I look at it is this. Value types store the value reference type stored a reference. And let's say the reference is pointing to address location 123. Of course, it would be some hot little hexadecimal number, but hopefully you, you can make the leap of faith that if address 123 exists, exists out there in the Python runtime, that you could point to it by just noting its address. Now, like I said, I'm giving you an example in C sharp because Python doesn't really have this, but in C sharp it, it is truly in the .NET heap. The address of one two three is stored with the stack, but the actual value is stored in the heap. And if it was a, a value type, the actual value is stored with the application itself on the program stack. Okay, so that's uh, the general way it it, it is defined. You can read more about it out there on the internet. Uh, there's not a whole lot in your book about it, uh, but just remember that value types, the program itself, manages the memory location uh, where the data is stored. And in reference type, the memory is managed in a general runtime or heap of memory associated with the runtime environment, like the .NET environment for C Sharp and the Python environment for Python code. Another way of looking at it is, let's say I'm looking at uh, the .NET C Sharp example. 
I have a program that's running. I've made a little program, C sharp code, and I declare a variable x and y, and I tell it that one's an integer up to 30, uh, an integer 32 bits in size. And I got a value of 42 there, and I have a string. And strings are reference types, so I wouldn't have the value in the program, I just have an address location where I could go get the data in the .NET heap. A different program might have the same variable names, but the names of the variables are associated with the program itself. It's X and Y are in program 2 stack, and X being a value type, its value is stored directly in the program stack. String being a reference type, its, ref its value is actually stored out in the .NET heap in a different location, and I just have an address that I point to. Now, <clears throat> these numbers I just made them up there is a much more advanced addressing system obviously but I think you get the drift the idea is that you have a reference to data instead of the actual data itself Python is a little bit different Python doesn't really use that they have a Python runtime instead of a .NET heap and everything is a reference type so an integer it doesn't store the actual value in the program stack, it stores it on the heap and has an address reference. String, same thing. And of course if I had another program, another script file that I'm running, I can have X and Y in that other script file. The context is associated with the stack of program 2. So even though the variable names are the same, when I make variables the address will be different and of course I'll have a recording of the address. So that's the way it works in uh, Python. It's different in other languages, such as the .NET one. And each language you're going to learn in the future, you'll just have to learn which one it is, and you'll be done with it. It's not a big deal, because you really don't see this happening. It's completely automated. However, sometimes things don't always work exactly like you expect, and you can troubleshoot what's going on by knowing this. That's where it becomes useful. Let's see, let me uh, let me come back over here to idle and we'll play with this a bit. Okay, here's my test py file. I don't want to mess up my lab2 file, so I'll close that down. And I'll put this code in here. I just copied it and pasted it. If I take x and I add, uh, put 1 inside of it, and y, and I say y is the value of x, and then later on I change x, what is y going to print out? Well, let's see here. The question becomes, does the value of x get passed over into y? Or does the address? If the address gets passed over, then both variables will be pointing the same address location, and changes to one affect the other. In other words, if both x and y are pointing to address number 64, if I change the value in address 64, it affects y. Let's see how it works. It didn't change y, so it's acting like a value type. It's going through and acting as if the value was stored. Value types, when you use the assignment operator, they pass the value. Value types pass a value. I really don't care where the data is stored. I want to see how it works. If it passes a value, it acts as a value type. If it passes an address, a reference, it acts as a reference type. Let's see if I can find an example here for us. So some simple integers. I'm going to go through and copy this because it's a lot of code. I'll paste it in there and we'll just talk about it. So first, we've seen how this one works. It acts as a value. The value is passed over. But if I group the values together into a list and do the same thing, this is considered complex data. Now, you refer to an element of the list by going through and indicating which element you want. Item 1, item 2, and the numbering system starts off at 0. So if I say x sub 0, that's how you pronounce it, x sub 0, instead of 3, this variable, this value I should say, will be converted to 3. And when I run that, 
you're going to see that even though I change X, it affects Y. I'm printing out Y even though here I only changed X. And the reason for that is because when I group the numbers together, it acted as complex data. And so this line ran as a reference type. It passed a reference. Now X and Y are pointing to the same address, address location. Changing one affects the other. Let's try the next one down. It's a string of characters. Strings are known to be reference types. So if I do this, it should pass a reference, but did it? Actually, when I go through and print out Y, it prints out Bob. And that's because although strings are noted as being reference types in almost all languages, it actually usually is changed to act like a value type. So that if you use it, it will behave like a value type. Now, I have always found this somewhat confusing because that means that they bent the rules. Now, <clears throat> if I take and group the strings together, it will now again act like a reference type. And that's why changing it later on affects Y. And now it prints out Robert. Okay. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, man, that's just hard on the brain. Yeah, it is. Don't worry too much about it. As we go forward in the class, I'm going to show you examples. I'm going to remind you it acts like a value type. It acts like a reference type. It's all going to work out just fine. Basically, it comes down to this. Sometimes things pass a value. Sometimes things pass a reference. And if in doubt, test it out. It's the only way to know for sure until you get really good at this. Okay, that's it for um, the reference types versus value types. As mentioned in the book, read what the author has to say, slightly different take on it, and then just move on, and you can make your own decision as time goes on. Next up, we're going to talk about the assignment. I'll see you there.